This video is a new and improved rewritten, re-recorded and re-edited 2.0 of a previous One Piece 101. The old video is still up if you'd like to watch it, but it was in serious need of an update, so enjoy. I am only one man with one heart. Call me a demon, call me a monster, but I can't be the strongest forever. It'd be a shame if you died here, kid. If you still want to wreak havoc on this sea, then bear my name on your back and go wild as much as you like. Become my son. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today, we are going to be tackling one of the most legendary figures to ever grace the series, being Edward Newgate, better known as Whitebeard. Edward Newgate is an abnormally large man standing at a ridiculous height of 666 centimeters tall and commanding an even greater reputation as not only the strongest man in the world, but also as the individual closest to the One Piece following Roger's death. However, little did the world know that Whitebeard never had any intention of seeking out the One Piece because his interests only ever lay in a single area, which was his dream to one day have a family. This stems from the fact that Whitebeard grew up as an orphan after his home island of Sphinx became too poor to pay the heavenly tribute to the ever despicable world nobles and thus were exiled from the world government. And with very few other options available to him, Whitebeard then took it upon himself to support his home village by becoming a pirate and passing on any resources he gained to ensure their survival. But by delving into piracy, Whitebeard would also commence a journey to attain his greatest desire in life, going on to eventually form his own crew modeled under the theme of family. Amongst the Whitebeard pirates, every member, no matter what their position within the crew, was considered a treasured family member by its captain, Edward Newgate, who even went so far as to address them all as sons. Although a particularly special mention must go to his first division commander, Marco, whom Whitebeard places supreme trust and confidence in and treats him as a valued vice captain figure. But this would not be the full extent of Whitebeard's family, as he extended his hand to even those who would not become his direct subordinates. Amassing a powerful legion of allies, as well as furthering his brand by offering protection to many prominent nations of the globe whom the world government had failed, such as Fishman Island, for example. And once an individual, a crew, or a location became part of Whitebeard's family, his love was indiscriminate. And not only that, but Whitebeard was also a very forgiving father, as he has been shown to be willing to embrace sons that lose their way and even betray him. Well, all sons with the exception of one, but uh, we'll get to that. In any case, with something now to directly protect, Whitebeard continued to acquire the strength that would come to shake the very world. But more so than even that, it was the strong familial bonds formed by the crew that would propel both their captain and themselves into global prominence, rising to rival the forces of the future pirate king, Gold D. Roger. As such, the crews clashed many times over their respective careers, so much so that Whitebeard came to know most of the members of the Roger Pirates by name, even the lower ranking members such as Shanks and Buggy. However, despite the bloodshed resulting from their battles, Whitebeard held a phenomenal amount of respect for Roger, who after becoming the pirate king, met up with Whitebeard one last time for a more cordial drinking session in the last days of his life. During which time he explained the will of D and even offered to tell Whitebeard how to get to the legendary island Raftel, which would have almost certainly resulted in Whitebeard Whitebeard becoming the next Pirate King, with minimal effort no less. Although Whitebeard would refuse this offer, as he, unlike many members of his generation as well as the next, had no interest in pursuing such a desire. Following the execution of Roger, Whitebeard became an undisputed power on the seas, primarily known by the terrifying fact that he was the only individual to have equaled the former Pirate King, and as a result, he would go on to become one of the four Emperors of the Sea, a group of pirates who individually commanded power only paralleled by their fellow Emperors or by the Marine Organization. Although despite this terrifying status within the world, Whitebeard continued amassing his family, even going so far as to invite the child of his former rival, Roger, to become one of his sons. And that was also despite the fact that Roger's biological son, Port Castillace, had made it his mission to kill Whitebeard. But after coming to learn of the bond the crew shared with their captain and their legitimate love for him, Ace began wearing the symbol of Whitebeard proudly upon his back, and eventually even rose to become the second division commander of the crew. Unfortunately, all would not remain well within the Whitebeard pirates, as one day, one of Whitebeard's sons by the name of Marshall D. Teach would come to murder another, the commander of the 4th Division, Thatch. This was done in order to acquire a devil fruit known as the Yami Yami no Mi, of which Teach was using the Whitebeard pirates to locate. Now, despite being enraged himself, Whitebeard counseled his 2nd Division commander, Ace, not to pursue Teach and take revenge. However, Ace left anyway, and this would lead directly to the end of the Whitebeard pirates as we know it. After being defeated by Teach, now known as Blackbeard, Ace was turned over to the Marines, who planned to execute him at their headquarters of Marineford, blatantly baiting Whitebeard to face their full forces directly, with the goal of eliminating one of the four emperors and the strongest man in the world. Of course, none of this mattered at all to Whitebeard, as his only thought was given to rescuing one of his sons, and so an event known as the Paramount War was instigated. The Whitebeard pirates, along with their extended allies, conducted a full-scale invasion of Marineford, during which we would come to know exactly why Whitebeard was revered as the strongest man 
Spider-Man in the world. As far as combat in One Piece goes, we have never seen a more durable source of tremendous might that stands so high against anything else this world has to offer. Whitebeard is a man who could overpower even giants with his basic strength, a man who possessed speed fast enough to sneak up on even admiral level combatants and the drive to dismiss life-threatening injuries as if they were but a flesh wound. And all of this was despite the fact that at the time, Whitebeard was suffering heavily debilitating effects brought on simply by his old age, as he was 72 at the time of the Paramount War. But along with his physical prowess, Whitebeard also possessed a full complement of Haki, despite the fact that he was rarely properly seen engaging in it, primarily due to the fact that his portion of the story predated Haki focus and explanation. However, little hints can be seen here and there, such as when Whitebeard didn't bother to do anything about Crocodile's attack because he knew that Luffy would stop him, thus assumedly engaging in observation Haki, as well as going on to use armament Haki to damage Logia users. Although the most interesting one is Conqueror's Haki, because whilst it has been stated that Whitebeard does indeed have it, he either did not use it or it was not apparent to the audience during the Paramount War. In any case, the power he did have access to was truly absurd, but that certainly wasn't even the end of it because to top it all off, Whitebeard also happened to possess a devil fruit known as the Gora Gora no Mi, which was fabled to be the strongest fruit within the entire Paramecia class. This fruit allowed Whitebeard to create shockwaves, which if he so desired could result in earthquakes, tsunamis, and in the words of former Fleet Admiral Sengoku, even had the potential to destroy the entire world. With all of this in mind, it is not an underestimation to say that the Marines threw absolutely everyone and everything they had at this man, and that was still not enough to put him down. However, Whitebeard's time was still coming to an end, and after the failure to rescue Ace, the final series of blows would be dealt by his former son, Blackbeard. Whitebeard then went on to use his final words to say that Blackbeard was not the man that Roger had been waiting for, and then exclaimed at the top of his lungs that the One Piece does exist, essentially reigniting the age of piracy that was started by his rival Roger. He then apologized to his crew and bid them farewell before passing away. But to put his legacy into some perspective, what it took to bring down this man was being slashed and stabbed a total of 267 times, being shot by 152 bullets, being hit by 46 cannonballs, as well as suffering a laser beam from Kizaru and taking multiple magma infused hits of Akainu, one of which actually blew off a huge chunk of his head. And even with all of this, Whitebeard remained standing, even after death. And not only that, but it needs to be noted that in all of this, Whitebeard did not receive even a single wound on his back, speaking volumes about his sheer tenacity and belief in facing challenges head on, never cowering and never faltering. That was the kind of man that Whitebeard was. Some more fun facts about Whitebeard. Following the Paramount War, Whitebeard and Ace were buried side by side on an island near Whitebeard's homeland of Sphinx, a monument that would go on to be replicated by Universal Studios Japan with an epitaph that reads, Edward Newgate, captain of the Whitebeard Pirates. Here lies a great captain and father, liberated from the exhausting role and labor who captained the Moby Dick in the spectacular era of pirates. As a man who sat atop the pinnacle of the One Piece world, Whitebeard has encountered many, if not all of its major players, and so holds deep histories with them. One of which actually being the fact that Whitebeard is responsible for giving Crocodile his facial scar after he challenged him in combat. Amongst Whitebeard's extended family is also a very familiar whale shark by the name of Jinbei. And in fact, Whitebeard is one of the few individuals in this world for whom Jinbei holds the utmost of respect. So much so that he chose to forfeit his position as a warlord of the sea rather than be summoned to Marineford to fight against the Whitebeard pirates. This is mainly due to Whitebeard's role as the protector of Fisherman Island. And Jinbei has stated that he holds a great debt of gratitude towards him. So much so that Jinbei would be willing to lay his life down without a moment's hesitation should the situation call for it. And as for people Whitebeard himself respected, well, we can actually count our then rookie protagonist, Monkey D. Luffy. This is partially due to hearing about Luffy from fellow Emperor of the Sea Shanks, as well as from his own division commander, Ace. And this respect was solidified when Luffy appeared during the Paramount War, resulting in Whitebeard actually assigning Marco to the role of protecting him. Despite having dedicated his life to his pirate family, it's actually entirely possible that Whitebeard even had his own biological family at some stage. The sly dog he is, as it is alleged by Warlord of the Sea Edward Weevil that he is in fact the son of Whitebeard. Or more accurately, it is claimed by his mother, Miss Buckin, who is the self-proclaimed lover of Whitebeard. And while this may seem absurd, the claim isn't entirely without merit, as Weevil's strength has been compared to that of a young Whitebeard, which is a fairly terrifying thought. If you're unfamiliar with Japanese, during this video, you may have questioned why Edward Newgate was known as White Beard, despite not actually having a beard. This is because the Japanese epithet is actually Shirohige, with the Hige portion referring to facial hair in general. And I guess white facial hair wasn't decent enough sounding for an English audience. And finally, a truly useless fact, in the SBS of volume 58, Oda jokingly stated that Whitebeard once had a dog named Stefan, who came complete with his master's signature present moustache. 
But that pretty much does it for the late, great Edward Newgate. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101. Now I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a 72 year old man who makes young boys call him daddy, but we here at the Grand Line Review have attained an image courtesy of a reporter of the World Economic Journal, and to protect his identity we're going to refer to him by the alias of Big News Bird. But it's a photograph that was taken just prior to Ace joining the Whitebeard Pirates, and uh, well, I guess we can, uh, we can all make up our own minds.